Let's go back to the phone lines. Dr. Christine in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Hi, Christine. Oh, hi, Hank. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Okay, right on. Hey, Hank, some years ago, uh, I had a chance to talk to my brother. He's walked away from his faith, and we were talking about God and and just uh, the afterlife and stuff, and he just said to me, he remarked, he said, don't worry. He said, Chris, you won't remember me anyway. And my first just immediate response was, yeah, but you might remember me. And thinking about hell, and I don't want him to go. I'm praying for his soul and his return to Christ. Um, but are there degrees in hell, or is everyone in the same place? I know the the the, um, the rich man looked up from hell and he saw he saw heaven. Now, to me, not knowing that my loved ones and forgetting about them, that's heaven. Because if I knew they were in hell, I wouldn't enjoy heaven. But is the opposite true then for those who are on the different degrees in hell? Is that what hell is, remembering your loved ones, remembering the times that you had a chance to turn to Christ? Could you explain a bit more about sure. that? Sure, yeah. Um, well, remember, uh, first and foremost, that when we are in the eternal state, we will see things from a completely different vantage point than we do now. Because now we see darkly, dimly, then we will know even as we have been known. When we're in the presence of God, we will see the perfect union of his love and his justice. So we will know that God has done all that he has done with supreme love and with perfect justice. Uh, So again, our vantage point will be significantly different. You know, if we, uh, if we were eyewitnesses to a horrendous crime and we were in a courtroom and we saw in the end that the court and the judge, the jury and all in the courtroom recognized what had really happened as opposed to perhaps the alibi of what might have happened, we would be delighted that justice now could be properly served. And in a small way that gives us a bit of an inkling of how we would view the justice of God in light of the supremacy of his love from the perspective of eternity. Now, going a bit further to answer your question, yes, it is absolutely true that there are degrees of reward in heaven, and degrees of punishment in hell. And we see this uh, when we look through the Bible in its context. Behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me, and I'll give to everyone according to what he has done. Or Jesus saying, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt, and where thieves break in and steal, but rather Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So Jesus is saying that there are degrees of reward in heaven, not only uh, when he's speaking uh, in, in, in the context of revelation, uh, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, but also as he's speaking during his earthly sojourn. The, the thing that's really clear if you page through the scriptures uh, with the idea of uh, eternal rewards or degrees of rewards is that it is something that is amply communicated. And sometimes I tell people, start in Revelation chapter 22 with the verse I just quoted, and then cross-reference yourself through the Bible, and you'll see that what I'm saying is indeed true. But just as there are degrees of reward in heaven, so too there are degrees of punishment in hell. God is perfectly just, and he's going to reward and punish each person in accordance with what they have done. And the Bible is clear that with greater revelation and responsibility comes stricter judgment. So Jesus warned the Pharisees that they would be punished more severely for their willful hypocrisy. And in denouncing the cities where where most of his miracles had been performed, remember him saying, 
Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that had been performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Siren, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And therefore, says Jesus, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And uh, we should also recall that Jesus used the metaphor of physical torture to warn his hearers that those who knowingly disobey God's commands will experience greater torment in hell than those who disobey in ignorance. My point is that the canon of Scripture ratifies the common sense notion that not all sin is created equal, and therefore to think that a murderous thought is sin, and that that sin would carry the same uh, penalty as actually carrying out a murderous deed uh, simply is, is unbiblical. The other thing, though, that I think in the whole conversation that has to be remembered is that those who are in hell ultimately are those who want nothing to do with God, do not want a relationship with God. So God gives them what they want. Imagine the opposite. Imagine that God would force his love on people in this life and force that love on people for all eternity in the afterlife. That would make heaven a torment worse than hell. I've written about this in various places, including a complete Bible answer book, collector's edition, the book Resurrection, and the book Afterlife, what you need to know about heaven, the hereafter, and near-death experiences. Those books, Christine, you can find on the web at equip.org. Nice talking to you today.